National Golf Club, Augusta, Georgia. The 47th Masters. All week, some things will seem just a little amiss. Weather and the rainouts and delays it causes are the big villains. Huge storms that devastate much of the South drench Augusta almost non-stop for 48 hours. The new state-of-the-art water control system that governs the most infamous hazard here, Ray's Creek, is tested to its limits. So is the patience and the resourcefulness of the men who normally run the masters with such clockwork precision. The soldiers in the trenches meet the challenge capably too. But the patrons will definitely see some firsts this time beyond the unwelcome ones imposed by the tempest. Contestants work out this year on a much improved driving range, hitting first grade golf balls supplied by the club and collected mechanically, not as of old by their caddies, along with a few bruises and aching heads. Some of the caddies are first timers here too. The players can now bring their own instead of having to use the club's regulars. And here's a double first, Elizabeth Archer, working for a former Masters champion father, George. And she definitely is the first woman to loop a bag around this golf course. And among all the firsts, there's one very sad last this week. The incomparable Samuel Jackson Sneed has announced that this will be his last drive down Magnolia Lane with a set of sticks and a pair of spikes in the trunk. Well, you know, after you come down the first couple of times, you forget about those trees. And today, as I drove in, I was thinking, well, old fellas, you're just getting like I am. You're getting about the end of the road. So it's a sad story to say, well, goodbye, but I've had so many fond memories, I wouldn't trade them for a million. There has to be a time where, uh, well, this is it. Uh, I can't cut the mustard anymore. Uh, I'm going to play uh, tournament uh, uh, golf uh, with the old seniors now. They're more of my caliber now. Uh, I think I can hold my own with most of those. But uh, with the new bunch, the kids now, they're so strong, hit it so far. But Gusta, the Masters, is the best run tournament in the world. And of course, this man won that tournament three times. Thanks for the memories, Sam. Thursday, the opening round, and the raindrops continue to fall relentlessly on a course already sodden by overnight downpours. But with no wind and no fire in the greens, the red numbers denoting under par scores grow steadily throughout the day. Californian Jack Renner has eagled both the 13th and 15th, two of what will become a record one round total of 12 eagles. With this putt on the 18th to go five under par, Renner will share the lead at the close of the day with Ray Floyd and Gil Morgan. But there are even bigger stories. James Hallett, a 21-year-old New England amateur, comes to 18 at three under par after spectacularly eagling the 15th. And with this monster from off the green, finishes at 68, a phenomenal performance for a part-timer and master's rookie. And then, at the other end of the experience spectrum, there is this man, the one and only Arnold Palmer. Accompanied, as always, through the high times and the low, by his particularly special Augusta Army, the 53-year-old Emperor of American Golf is off to his best master's start since the second of his four victories here in 1960. Birdie at number two, and he'll follow it with another at the third, and then three in a row from the 14th through the 16th. With only one bogey this happy day, Palmer comes to the final hole with an 18-foot putt to actually tie for the lead. And there almost certainly isn't even one person here who doesn't just ache to see him make it. No, 
it isn't to be. But that's a super solid 68, and Arnie's best score at Augusta National in years. And you know for sure who's going to dominate the next morning's headlines, even if the world suddenly stops turning overnight. And that on Friday will be about it. The newspapers and the soaps and maybe a movie or a card game as another night of pelting rain renders the golf course completely unplayable. Along with the washout, the officials announce their hope of completing the third round on Saturday to be followed by a doubleheader of 36 holes to complete the tournament as usual on Sunday evening. Saturday, still dank and dismal, and the course cleanup forces a late morning start using both nines simultaneously and playing in threesomes. But there will be one unexpected twosome out there also. Hit by a severe muscle spasm in his lower back just before his tea time, the only five-time winner here, Jack Nicklaus, is forced to withdraw from his 25th Masters. And you just know that the psychic pain of having to do so equals the physical. And yet again, the weather adds another note of strangeness to this different feeling masters. Rain has forced a 40 minute delay in play and the leader Gil Morgan in the final group can only complete the 16th hole in near darkness before the officials have no choice but to call it quits. Hallett, Palmer and Seve Ballesteros must walk in too from the 18th tee and along with the Morgan group, will complete the round early the next morning. With no chance now of a Sunday doubleheader, the Masters will run over to Monday for the first time in many years, except for the days when playoffs, now at sudden death, went the full 18 holes. Sunday and at long last sunshine. Finally, this delectable playground shines in all its verdant glory, and the Masters begins to seem at rights with itself once more. But even now, there is a sad start to the day for the early birds as the man who tugs at everyone's heartstrings ends a faltering second round with trouble at the 18th. Two putts will give him a 74. The magic of the man remains, but the dream that still burns so bright within him is fading yet again. And so too, on a rising, drying wind are the dreams of many of the early pacemakers. As the course climbers back to normality, the best survivors, as so often over the years, are those who have excelled here before. Ray Floyd, the 76th champion, to number 12. Wowee! And the certain birdie puts him at six under par. On a day when only one golfer breaks 70, holding there through 18 will give Raymond a share of the lead. Craig Stadler, the defending champion, to the par 5 13th. Third shot. At one under par so far today, Craig is also passing a whole slew of the early front runners. For birdie. Bingo! And he'll sink one four times that length on 17 for another birdie to join Floyd in the lead at six under par. The 15th, Tom Watson for an eagle after two mighty wood shots dead into the wind. It's not been a great year so far for this two-time Masters champion, but just riding down Magnolia Lane seems to raise his game a few notches. This for a birdie. Yes, sir. And Watson will end the day right up there, too. Just two back of Floyd and Stadler. Severiano Ballesteros, number 18, eight iron. Seve's great play here in 1980 at age 23 made him the youngest golfer ever to win the Masters. Seve started this round in second place. Side door, but what a great finish. And it keeps him right in the thick of it. Just one behind Floyd and Stadler and one ahead of Watson. So, 18 holes to go, and the last three winners here, plus the co-record holder, are perfectly positioned for our classic finale. Monday, and it's just gorgeous weather again, 
as the handsome young man from Padrina, Spain, heads for the driving range in the beginning of a big working day. He'll be playing with Watson, immediately ahead of Stadler and Floyd. Number one, seven iron off a lovely drive. Watson was well left from the tee and just short with his second. Well now. Watson chipping. And beautifully. About eight feet. And to share the lead right off the bat. Right in the heart. Number two, the par five. Forward, going for it. Watson, also with a four wood. And how's this for a counterpunch? Maybe 15 feet to Seve's 10. For Eagle. Oh, too bad. But it's a cast iron birdie, which certainly doesn't hurt him one little bit. Look at that concentration. Seve spends hours before he plays, working himself into the right mental attitude. Oh boy, slam, bam, birdie, eagle. And suddenly after being a shot astray, Seve Ballesteros is leading the Masters by two strokes. Stadler to the second with an iron off a ginormous tee shot. Craig opened with a bogey. Ouch. Usually the ball shoots forward and rolls from there, which is what he had in mind. Floyd, same hole, third shot from Sand. Not so bad from that distance. Stadler's elected to chip. But it's a birdie, so the pain is pretty short-lived this time. Floyd for birdie. For par to stay within two of Ballesteros. Seve to number four, 205 yards. Both he and Watson parred the third. And isn't this just the most unbelievable golf? Two feet at the very most. Watson, and how do you follow that act? Pretty darn well under the circumstances, about 15 feet. Sevy struck that shot with a two iron, dead into the teeth of the wind. Watson for birdie, and these are beginning to look like musts. Nope, and there's a little bit left, too. For par. Solid. To go four under on the opening four holes. To lead Stadler and Floyd by three, Watson by four. Number five, Watson for birdie. Yep, and that puts him two under par for five holes. But 
He still dropped two shots to Ballesteros. Incredible. Floyd to the seventh and coming off two straight bogeys. From beginning one ahead of Ballesteros, he's now five behind. Well, it's on the short stuff at least. Stadler with an almost identical shot. He bogeyed the sixth, so he's now four adrift of Ballesteros. There's hardly a tougher golfer to beat when he starts in front, but Raymond seems to be having difficulty getting anything going today. This to maybe turn things around. No, sir. Or birdie. Nicely done. But he'll need plenty more of those if he plans to stop that Spanish Armada up front. Savi pitched way short at the par 5 eighth and has left himself a horribly difficult putt. Watson's much closer after knocking two drivers on the green. Got it, you got it. What a magnificent touch. Watson for an eagle, and oh boy, could he use one. Slam dunk almost dented the cup. In fact, he'd say later it would have gone at least a dozen feet past if it hadn't caught the back of the hole absolutely true. And there she goes. Suddenly, there are only two strokes in it. But more and more, it's looking like a two-horse race. Number nine for Birdie. And there's that go get him attitude again. Piasteros for Birdie. Thrust and counter thrust. Golf at its classic head-to-head -head best. Now the screws have really tightened to stay within three. Ow! Up go the lights, and then just moments later, how they can drop again at this game. And the body language tells it all. Seve to the short 12th. He picked up another stroke on Watson. Stadler's now his closest pursuer at three shots back. But here's trouble. And there's clean living for you. Deep in the boonies, then out she pops. Watson. Looks a little light. The lie looks perfect. The way he's putted today, that's almost a gimme. Watson. Lovely stone dead. For par. Uh-uh. Aim and corner almost unglued Savvy when he won here in 1980. Those memories must be getting pretty vivid right now. Plum in the center, but that's bogey. And there's another miscue from the 13th tee. He's deep in the left woods. Here's the recovery, usually a Biostero specialty. And here's the situation as he sizes up a tough long iron approach to a tight pin position. Watson and Stadler both four back after Craig bogeyed 12. Floyd definitely out of it now with his cold putter. And the two Texans, Ben Crenshaw and Tom Kite, racing for a place, but with insufficient holds left to threaten Ballesteros, short of him breaking an arm or leg. Savvy has to go with a longish iron. And it looks absolutely dead on the pin. 
Oh, my goodness gracious. Where does a man get the moxie to hit a shot like that at a moment like this? For birdie to match the one Watson just made here the orthodox way. Oh, and did he want that one? But it all adds up to a par five, so his cushion is still at a high comfort level. Watson's just missed the fairway right at 14, but he's got a fine lie, pitching wedge. And that, if you ever saw one, was a flat miss. And it leaves him almost no chance of getting close to this pin. The problem now is really to stop the ball somewhere on the putting surface. That's about all he could have hoped for. Fourth stroke coming up. Ballesteros made his par. This for bogey. No, double bogey six. And as Tom would say later, here's where the lights finally went out. And so, with every challenger felled and licking the wounds, the final holes become a march of triumph for one of the most gifted and exciting golfers ever to grace this fine old game. British Open champion in 1979, Masters champion in 1980. A winner now 29 times around the world since he first emerged nearly a decade ago from the quiet reaches of a far off land. Seve Ballesteros, just 26 this week, strides pridefully to his third major championship in a career that all who truly know him predict must ultimately include many more. And almost as though scripted in Hollywood, the manner of his finale superbly exemplifies the man and his game. The strength to be bold, the courage to dare, the self-control to err, and then above all else, the intelligence, the skill, and the nerveless touch to recover brilliantly. Ballesteros, the 1983 Masters Champion.